Hey everybody. <clears throat> so today is day one. It's going to be a two day process I've decided, but we are installing our solar today. So we are here uh, just outside Port Angeles, Washington at the Dungeness Recreation Area in Squim, Washington, out on Puget Sound near Olympic National Park. We got a ton of adventures planned, but one of the big projects we're gonna do is we're going to install our new solar panels on the roof. So, wanted to get you a run up to speed on what we've done so far. Um, this is gonna be a mixture of videos as well as some still images uh, that we've taken um, just because it's hard to get video throughout the whole thing. So, so far what we've done, um, and I'm going to put links to everything that uh, we are using in the description below and also on our blog that we're getting ready to start. So, um, just to let you know, we are installing six 100-watt rich solar energy panels putting them all on the roof of our Outback 240 URS 2018. Um, so let me show you quick. I don't know if you can see that. That's the box they came in. So when we ordered them, there was two per box instead of individually. Um, but it saved me a couple bucks. But uh, So I've cut the box lids so that, number one, they are the exact same size as the solar panels. I can lay the box lids out on the roof first just to get an idea of exactly how I want to position them. Then I can take the panels up. And then I can put the box lids on top of the panels and just kind of blue tape them down so that they're not um, up and running while I'm doing the install. So the other thing we've done is we have mounted to loosely, uh, we haven't tightened everything up yet, but we've mounted loosely the mounting brackets. And one of the things about these mounting brackets, and again, you'll see the picture, I'll, I'll put a picture below. These are curved mounting brackets, which allow me to adjust for height because of the arch in the roof. Now we don't have a huge arch, but it also allows taking the panels off much easier than if I just mount the hard L-shaped uh, mounting brackets and then screw them to the roof because then I got to try to reach under there and there's only going to be a little bit of clearance. This is going to give me much more clearance, potentially maybe up to three or four inches high if I need to, but I don't think I'm going to have to go that high. So I'm going to show you here um, in the back of the truck, and sorry, that you're going to see a ton of mess of stuff, but here are the six panels and we have put the arched brackets on. So basically once we get up there after everything's tightened down, we'll be able to figure out where we want to do it. Well, um, you know, position it where we want, tighten these down. I'm going to put a little bit, a uh, little bit of blue Loctite on it. Um, not red because that's permanent. Um, and then figure out exactly where I want to drill the holes. I'm going to drill small little pilot holes in the roof and then die core, uh, a little bit of die core in there. And you'll see all of that in the future. But anyway, so we've got all six panels right here and they all have their mounting brackets loosely mounted there. I'm going to tighten them down tomorrow when we actually put the brackets on or mount, mount the panels on the roof. Um, we are, as you can see, in a very wooded area. And so first thing I did today was uh, wash the roof off a little bit, but it's damp and I don't want to install the panels when it's damp. So I'm going to do some of the other running today of some of the lines and show you that. And then tomorrow I'm going to get up there um, and mount the panels. So also right here, and you'll see a still image probably here soon, um, are some of the other supplies I got. I got two things, a lap sealant, a Dicor lap sealant, self-leveling. Um, I got two MC4 fuses. I got 20 amps a piece. I am going to be connecting these panels in three of them together in series, the other three together in series, and then those two in parallel, so series parallel. So it should give me 600 watts. Um, I'm guessing it'll give me probably, I'm sorry, yeah, 600 total watts, obviously, um, but it's gonna give me maybe 10 amps down to the solar charge controller. I wanted to be able to use smaller wire, so I ran them in series versus parallel um, so that I didn't have such high amperage. Um, we've got some splitters here to join the two series together, either the male or female connector and the MC4s. Um, I got MC4 connectors. I got like a bag of 15. The link will be below. Um, I bought 50 feet of uh, copper wire, and I'll show that to you here in a second. And then I just got a few other supplies here. 
Um, I've got my drill bits, um, and I am using for that, I'm using a 3 8 inch drill bit to um, drill the holes that I need. In I'm going to be running the wire down the refrigerator chase. So you're going to see that here shortly once I get up on the roof. But here is, I'm stretching the cable out. That's why it's kind of dangling from my awning right now. Um, but I got 50 feet of cable from Amazon or wire. Um, it came in a spool like this. That's way more than we're probably ever going to need on this project. And um, that's it for now. So I'm going to get some stuff situated, kind of get up on the edge of the roof so that you guys can see what we're doing up there. All right, I'm up at the top of the ladder as you can see. Um, so I am right by our refrigerator chase. So basically what I did is I took the lid off. There were four little screws that were siliconed in. Um, just, they're, they're really hex heads. So I ended up just using a uh, screwdriver and this fit perfect for that. So, um, so I took this off. A couple things to keep in mind. Um, this screen that is in here is extremely brittle. So I'm probably gonna have to do something else once I'm all done with this project. But basically I just clipped around the edges here so that I could fold this up and have access. I wanna put a couple drill, a couple screw hole or uh, drill bit holes there to run the cords in there and then run them down the chase right there on the side as best I can and then I'll show you where that's going after that but uh, yeah so once I'm done is I'll just fold this screen back down the best I can and I'll probably just put some silicone around the edges to try to fill in um, so the critters and stuff aren't getting in there but uh, you know while I while I had it open I went ahead and um, used the leaf blower and blew all the crap out of it so there was pine needles and things like that so uh, cleaned it out a little bit um, but yeah so let me drill a couple holes and we'll be back okay so as you know we're gonna have to run two lines down there we're gonna have to run the positive and the negative I've got one hole drilled with a 3 8 inch bit and I'm gonna try to fish this down the side of the refrigerator flue down to Michelle who's down there and uh, it's gonna be hard to do this on camera and I don't have a little tripod, so uh, we'll have to uh, just show you what happens. And right now there's chiggers all up here. So Okay, should... run number one was successful. Ended up just getting a crescent wrench and kind of looping the copper to the crescent wrench and then dropping it down the corner. So we got one down here. Let me uh, finish and tidy up this a little bit and give me some extra distance. Okay, we've got back. about, I'd say probably about six feet of cord or of wire um, run out the back of the refrigerator. Right. Um, so that should be plenty to get us over underneath the couch where our rest of our electrical is. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this in there. But right in there, I've already drilled one hole to run one of the lines through. I'm gonna go ahead and put another hole in there so we have a positive and a negative. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and fish this into that cavity. That cavity in our camper goes straight through to the back of the drawer underneath the pantry. So I'll take you inside after we're done and show you what's going on in there. But I'm gonna go ahead and run this line in there. And then I've got some zip ties um, uh, that I can help tie down this cord just to make sure it doesn't get too close to the heating elements and stuff for the refrigerator. So give me a second. I'll take a couple pictures of... All right, I'm taking you with me as I climb up onto the roof again. Got the drill with the 3 8 inch bit. And so as you can see, we've run the wire down through that hole and I'll be able to put some silicone in that hole to tidy that up. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off, but I'm gonna give myself plenty of extra cable up here because I can put the, since I'm putting my own MC4 connectors on, I can put them on wherever I want once I realize um, or figure out exactly how much um, cable we need or wire we need. So I'm gonna okay. do that. I gave myself probably about three feet of wire up here um, just to give myself enough space to maneuver around once the panels are up here. There's all the real estate three are going up there. 
One's going right here next to the refrigerator or the air conditioner. One's going on the other side of the air conditioner and then one in the back. So uh, drilled another hole for the other wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and fish that down to my shell. All right, we have success. We got the other wire run down to Michelle and in through the second hole that we put in the side of the cabinet into the area behind the drawer. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tidy this up. I've got these cable timeouts right here. Um, they've got a 3M adhesive on the back and you just run a zip tie through there and then you can zip tie the cables. Basically, I'm trying to zip tie the cables to the wall to keep them along the side so that they're not touching any of the metal that gets warm when the refrigerator's on. So I'll show you what that looks like soon. Okay, as you probably saw just a moment ago in those still photos, I have the little zip ties. Um, the actual 3M adhesive that was on them wasn't sticking to the wood on the side of the cabinet down the, uh, the flue of the refrigerator. So um, ended up using some little heavier duty th uh, double back tape that I have. Um, I'll put that in a, uh, in the uh, link below too. Um, there's been a ton of research on this and this is one of the best double back tapes, um, VHB style tape, but it's real, it's a, it's a thicker foam, um, but it's super adhesive. So it's definitely worth having around for anything that you might need here in the camper. So I'm going to finish uh, tidying this up a little bit. I'm going to go get some silicone, put some silicone in these holes right here. I'm going to cut this so that we got about this much cord up here in the other ne negative or positive line, whatever it ends up being. And then I'm going to fold this back over and put the lid back on and then I'll show you what's going on on the inside. Okay, I'm inside now. Um, one thing I wanted to just show you here is I've taken the drawer out from below the pantry and you can see where the wires are coming in from the chimney of the refrigerator. So right back there you can see they came in so I've just got them sorry I've just got them bundled up back there for now. Um, tomorrow I will do some more drilling and put a couple additional uh, holes going down through the floor into the area behind the fuse box and then into the couch area. So uh, that's going to be it for today and um, tomorrow we'll be connecting some wires after we have the solar, pan solar panels mounted and run and uh, we'll take you along on our journey tomorrow. Thanks guys. Okay, so false alarm. I decided to do two more things before we call it a night. So um, back in the area, the back of the drawer, I went ahead and drilled a hole so that I could run these cords down that hole. I also pulled out the fuse box and there are two holes already drilled over underneath the bed from the propane lines and they're large enough just to slide these right adjacent run it right along the same trace so that's what I'm gonna do and uh, and then after that it should be over under the couch and then tomorrow we can take the couch off show you the rest of the setup with the solar charge controller the DC to DC charger that we use when driving the car and all of our batteries and and such the shunt and and the battery monitor and all that so um that is where we're going to stop i'm going to run that down run it across and call it night good morning day number two solar install um so as you can see i still have the panels in the back of the truck um, Michelle is in actually doing some work without school and doing a class for a student. So I am going to take this time and go ahead and secure the mounting bracket to the bottom of the panel. So as you remember, there's two sections for each mounting bracket. There's the curved side and then there's this, the flat side, the L shape that goes onto the roof. I'm going to secure the curved side to the bottom. Yesterday we just loosely mounted it. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little uh, thread locker on there and I have the thread locker right here. 
I have, even though it's in a red tube, which makes it super confusing, this is the blue 242, which is removable, which means it's not permanent um, should we ever have to take that off there. I'm also going to use it when we mount these bolts here um, once we get it up on the roof. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, as you can see, it still looks like I'm camped in the middle of the rainforest, which is absolutely beautiful. It's not going to be super good for uh, solar, but uh, I think at some point once we get the panels all mounted and the system set up, what I'm going to do is pull the camper out, maybe take it over to the dump station or something where there's a clear view of the sky and uh, just make sure that all the panels are running at optimal, uh, you know, wattage. So as you can see here is my official diagram I drew. Um, we're actually probably going to make a change. So this is the front of the camper up here. Um, I originally planned on mounting the two solar panels on the side of the air conditioner. However, I gave it some more thought last night. I think I'm going to mount them straight across the back like I am for the front. So I'm going to have three going across the front, three going across the back. That'll leave the space next to the air conditioner and between the air conditioner and the vent should I ever want to go any higher, which I highly doubt. 600 watts is going to be probably way more than Michelle and I will ever need. But um, And I think it'll make some of the um, cords that I have to or the wires that I have to create and build um, a little bit shorter so uh, we will start working on putting the tightening on these mounts and I'll show you what's uh, going on after I'm done with that so it'll be a little bit but in YouTube time it'll be a few seconds one other thing I did um, that was off camera and I just wanted to give you guys a heads up on it when I first uh, took delivery of the panels. Um, when I picked them up, I had them shipped to my parents' place here in Port Angeles. Um, I took them all out of the box, put them in the direct sun, and used a voltmeter to make sure that the voltage was somewhere within a few digits of what is projected. So on these, you can see here, 22.6 um, all of them read 22.6 to 22.8 so that means they're all appear to be working well I don't actually have an amp voltmeter um, the one I purchased thinking it was for amps is only for AC amps and not DC amps but uh, there's no indication there's any damage to these panels or anything so I think they're all operational and good to go so just finished up um, lock tighting the curved bracket to the panel itself um, if you guys are using loctite um, i would highly suggest maybe looking for a different brand i don't know if i had a bad little bottle of it i thought it was more of a gel and this stuff flows like water out of here um, so uh made a little bit of a mess um, but uh, you know if you can find one that's more of a gel um, that uh, would probably be a lot easier to use because this uh, you know, as you can see from the paper towel I had, has uh, more Loctite on the paper towel than I do on any of the bolts. So, uh, you know, word to the wise. Thanks. Roof of the 240 URS. So, we got panel number one up on the roof along with all my tools and my toolbox and kit and everything I need. So I'm going to start um, installing these. I'll kind of bring you in and out um, as I figure out how to best do this. All right. All right, I've got the first panel bolted or screwed to the roof. Took me a little bit of time to make sure everything was square and even, um, but I think this is going to work well. Now the subsequent panel should be a little bit easier because I can just measure off of that first one now that I know that one's square uh, to the edge and uh, we should be good. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next panel. Quick update for you guys. As you can see, I've got three of the panels almost completely mounted. Um, I still have to go back and die core all the mounts and everything like that. I ended up using four screws on each bracket, uh, two that were three quarters and one or two that were um, one and a quarter. Uh, this ultra light camper has a super thin roof, which is why it's not walkable. Um, so I think it's like small thin luon. It's not a normal piece of plywood. So um, I used uh, four screws, die cord under them and in the holes before I pre-drilled. 
I think what I'm going to do, and I'll, I'll show you that once I figure it out, I'm going to MacGyver something to make, an, in essence, an air uh, deflector so that when we're driving on the road, air is not getting under there and lifting the panels that it's coming up over it. So um, I think I have an idea of what I can use, but uh, I'll have to go to Home Depot and check it out. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to finish screwing these up, and then I'm going to move up to the front. Okay, so I'm back. Um, we have all six panels screwed to the roof. Not sure if you can see very well, but uh, you know, I still got them covered. I haven't run the electrical yet. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a project. This not being a non walkable roof really complicates this um, quite a bit, but uh, I got it done. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to figure out how long of coaxial, or I mean, how long of the uh, copper wire I need to run to get over to the refrigerator flue, and then I will run that, and then we'll probably head inside. I'm going to end up die coring all of this um, later, but I'm just going to let what I've already done dry a little bit, and then uh, come back out here later after the uh, roof has had even more time to dry um it's still damp in here uh, you know because we're under all this tree cover so thanks all right so uh michelle's behind the camera now and i'm gonna go ahead i've measured my first lead from the front panel um it's a male connector which is going to be the positive end of the uh the series but it's a male connector so i'm gonna have to put a female mc4 connector on there so I'm going to build that process here. And what's interesting about this, if you're building your own, number one, you can customize the length. I need about six feet um, of wire. So I'm just gonna do the female end here. And that way I can make the wires as short as I can when I get up to the roof. Um, but on a female MC4 connector, you use the male prong. So it's opposite. Um, female connector, male prong. So thanks. All right, I've got all of the wires connected. I made the male female connections. Everything's connected up top. The solar panels are still covered. What I want to do now is I'm going to take the couch off or take the couch out um, and then open up the cavity underneath. The Then I need to just pull the rest of the lines I ran yesterday down the uh, chimney chase and figure out then I'm going to test. I'm going to go up and uncover one of the panels just to be able to test to see which is hot and which is cold or which is positive and negative so that I know which one is going into the solar charge controller positive. So um, let me get the couch off here and I'll show All you. All right, for those of you who have this same camper, the Outback 240 URS and have never taken the couch off, here is all the extra space you have under there with the water pump also and the uh, hot water tank. So let me go through this real quick with you, what I've already got in here. Um, obviously I've done this a while ago, um, not too long ago, because I moved it from the front um, tongue, but I've got two lithium iron phosphate batteries, Renogy, 170 amp hours a piece, so at 340 amp hours. I have a power tech on, pure sine wave inverter 3000 watts which mounts and comes out right here i've got the renogy 20 amp dc to dc charger i've got the epever or epever however you say it mppt charge controller that i've been using with the old solar panels i'm going to continue to reuse that i've got over here the renogy battery monitor kit as well as the uh, supplemental screen for the epever um, show me how much solar i've got coming in um, i've got a shunt in there i've got some fuses and let me just show you a quick around And what I've done, that piece of wood on top of the batteries is basically just to make them a little bit tighter. The little straps that came with them, I wanted it tightened down to the floor too so it wouldn't move so much. And so I just got that in there from some, for some extra resistance. Um, we have secured the two lines that we ran yesterday through the area behind the fuse box. Michelle's got those in her hand. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up on the roof, uncover one of the panels that's somewhat in the sun, just to be able to get us a read for which is positive and negative, and then we'll know which one to run to the positive and negative on the solar charge controller. All, All right, that. we figured out the one that had already been shaved at the end that I did yesterday is actually the positive, so that works out well. So Michelle's got both positive and negative in her hand. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to go ahead, and it'll be easier for me to access the bottom of the um, MPPT uh, solar charge controller if I just take it off the wall for a second so I'm gonna go ahead and do that um, and that way I can easier more easily access underneath and put the new wires in there and I've covered the solar panel up again so that uh, it's less likely that we got any energy power in through all there. right I've got the uh, MPPT controller off of the wall and I'm gonna go ahead and take out the old leads I'm actually gonna leave the old leads in there as well because that way if I ever want to put a ground panel on for whatever reason I can do so and it's still connected to the outside um, but yeah and I'll show you what it looks like once I tidy it up a little bit all right so <clears throat> when we last left you I was getting ready to attach the wires coming down from the roof to the solar charge controller I did that um, I've learned a lot Number one, if you're going to install solar, do not do it in a very shady area. Um, you really just have no idea what you're working with. So long story short, after about half hour, 45 minutes of troubleshooting, making sure everything was coming down from the top correctly, it was all jacked up. I was getting, you know, like 57 volts, but zero amps and zero watts. Um, so long story short, I connected the the camper to the truck and then drove it out into the sunlight and I was popping at like 57 volts and uh, 23 or 26 amps and then um, was pulling in about 400 watts so that's not too bad apparently it's I did everything correctly so now I'm just tidying things up um, I'm gonna put the sofa back together and then I am going to go up on the roof and die core the crap out of all the screws that I put up there and uh, hopefully that will be uh, enough and then I will show you the final product after I go to Home Depot in the next day or two and find some something to d deflect the wind to make sure that I'm not potentially um, you know gonna have them ripped off the roof because of the thin Luan that they use as the roof so um, hope this has been helpful, but uh, don't leave just yet. If you like this video, we ask that you just hit the subscribe button. Uh, it's free. You can always unsubscribe, but uh, we're trying to work our way up to get monetized on YouTube, and uh, we've still got a ways to go. So uh, you know, if you can like it, also that helps. Let's uh, YouTube and everybody else know that you support our videos, and they'll show them to more people. So all right, thanks, guys. In this last section, I've included a few of the photos that I took along the way. <clears throat> I have uh, not yet mounted the new wind deflector, but I got some corrugated cardboard from Home Depot, and I'm going to mount that with some Eternabond tape to the front of each of the solar panels to help with the wind deflection. You'll also see here in the photos that I have not yet taped down the uh, cables that I have running around the roof, but I'm going to do that as soon as we get some dry days here in the Pacific Northwest. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.